Okay, we're live on Women Roar and just loading up there. And I'm gonna go ahead and actually put it live on mine, Fairyels, and Mary's pages since I manage them. <laughs> Be right back. Wonderful. Mary, I think your status from uh, the microphone is. Uh... We're live, Mary. Hello. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay, so we do have you online. We are online. We'll start in just a few minutes. How many people do we have? We have almost 20. So we'll give it a few minutes to get everybody on there. Or a few more and then we'll go ahead and get started. There's a lot of static noises. I don't yeah. know who it's from. Amanda. Hi. Yeah. I have a fan. Is that better? Yes. Yes, it is. We All could right. see your hair moving. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm trying to keep cool. <laughs> I'm trying to look like a supermodel with the hair. <laughs> yeah. We need a That's fan. That's what I was about to say. She's one with the wind blown look. Yeah. All right. I love it. Well, we might as well maybe start with introducing ourselves so those already in online can just be occupied <laughs> instead of getting bored and saying, hey, what next? We don't want to lose you, you stay online. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so why don't we go ahead, Ferriel, why don't you start? Oh my God, okay. <laughs> Well, what can I say? My name is Phil Young Joachim and I am an image consultant. I am feeling much better today. I've been sick for the last week and so was my husband, but thank God we're all getting well. But I was telling actually everyone around me that it's amazing what happened when you put your face on, your makeup on. <laughs> it, it just lifts your spirit. It's incredible. But today it's not about me. It's today it's about you, ladies and gentlemen. And we're going to share with you all that we have to inspire you and empower you to look good. That's it from my side. All right. Well, I'll go ahead. Um, I'm Amanda McMaster. I am not an image consultant. I have a marketing company called Mac Amanda Media. And I'm... You know, just so lucky that I've met Fariel and Mary and all these lovely image consultants have come into my life because I've learned so much. So I'm really excited to showcase them and Wendy and Rebecca. Um, so I think it will be a great panel. And I'm going to go ahead and get started and have Rebecca introduce herself and tell us about her and her business. Okay, thank you, Amanda. I am Rebecca Doster. I am based in Athens, Georgia, just outside of Atlanta. And I have been, I think Fariel referenced it earlier, I'm a fairly new image consultant. I actually started dipping my toe into this in 2018 and have come a, a, a good bit of a way. Um, some training with Fariel and some coaching and my business is Refined Image Consulting. I target the over 50 women and try to help them step into their style and gain confidence and go about the, the second chapter of their life boldly and empowered. Thank you, Rebecca. Um, Wendy, all the way up from Canada, or yeah, up in Canada. Up, up Canada. About our spectacular business. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yes, I live in Toronto. My name's Wendy Buchanan. And uh, my company's Perceptions Eyewear, I'm an image consultant and a licensed optician. So 23 years ago, I combined my two training modalities into that business so that I could specialize specifically in eyewear. I wear, I'm an image consultant. Hello? Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. More. Still can hear me? Yeah. yeah. Something weird's going on with my headset, so. Um, yeah, so I, uh, I specialize in eyewear and how that relates to image, to clothing style, personality, um, and of course, like your facial features for balance and proportion. Love it. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you, Wendy. And Mary, why don't you tell us about you and your wonderful book? Well, I'm Mary Giuseppe, and I'm so happy to be here with all of you. 
and I am a personal branding expert, former model, and now the author of my brand new book, Undeniably You. I'm so excited about this book because it's really, you know, it's a culmination of my many, many years of working with women and bringing all the beauty that they have on the inside to the outside so that we can celebrate with them and all the world can see. You know, I've always believed that we should, we should come in and powered and confident and live our highest and most beautiful lives. And this book really addresses all the aspects of what it takes to do that and the tips and tricks of someone who was a model for many, many years as well. So it's fun, I'm excited. Excellent. So, okay, let's go ahead and get started. Um, so my actual, my first question is actually for Ferriel. <laughs> and I was wondering, how do you communicate value to your clients? Because I know that you train image consultants, and then you also have clients that come for you for, to con for consulting. Good question, Amanda. You know what? <laughs> I struggle to actually get this across to my clients and consultants at the same time. We, at the beginning, need to put value in our us actually in our product or our service when you are an expert in an industry you need to know your value therefore by educating by telling your story not selling your product people will buy it without blinking people can see and relate to and they want what you have obviously and you can't just sell a product or a service or anything without creating bridges and relationship. So understanding all these points, what builds your business and personal brand as well. So therefore the key element to image consultant or to client is also to tap into, um, interview that person, see that their credibility, see their certification. Don't just sit, settle for second best. Why? Because you're paying your money anyway. And when you have this option and opportunity, you need to go for the best. Absolutely, very good point. Um, so my next question is to Rebecca. Um, can you tell me a little bit about dressing for today's Zoom meeting and why people need to network even virtually? Yes, absolutely. I think when we dress for Zoom meetings, it's very important to remember our audience. Remember, um, I know we we talk about the top, the time, the occasion, and the people you are addressing, whether it's in a business meeting or a networking event, um, even virtual happy hours that people do via Zoom these days. You want to, of course, I would recommend going to an image consultant and having your colors done so that you're wearing colors that flatter your skin tone. Solid colors work really well. Um, leave the jangly, noisy earrings and bracelets off for the Zoom meeting. Um, make sure that things are tailored and fit well and are not distracting on camera. Some prints are very noisy on camera. So, so Rebecca, wearing my PJ won't work? <laughs> um, no, I don't think so. Maybe you can wear the PJ bottoms because we wouldn't know as long as you don't stand <laughs> up. <laughs> but keep it professional. I think that people, because they're at home and they're in front of their own computer rather than being in an office environment, sometimes we tend to go a little casual and it doesn't send the best message. I think those people who will show up, dress appropriately. Remember that this is a business setting and remember that people are still, you still only have the seven seconds to make a first impression. Yeah. And even sometimes if people have met you, if your boss is on the other side and they see you show up with your hair in a bun and no makeup and you're wearing your PJs, they might think, hmm, maybe you're not who I thought you were and they might start reevaluating. So I think it's appropriate to always remember the setting and the message you want to send. Know who you are, know your brand and know, even if you're on Zoom, your, your brand is still relevant and it's still important. Absolutely. What are your thoughts about that, Mary and Wendy? Sorry? What are your thoughts about dressing for Zoom? Oh yeah, I, well, you know, and I'm in eyewear, so it's become even more prevalent um, you know, as everybody's on Zoom, you know, what, what do, what, 
does the eyewear say? Is it, you know, especially in the image industry or just as your own personal style, what is it telling? Because weirdly what they, they can see the color you're wearing, they can maybe see an accessory. And then if you're wearing glasses, that becomes so prominent now. Um, you know, and, and, and yes, my glasses can be distracting, but they're on brand because I'm in eyewear. So I think it becomes obvious that that's, that's what my expertise is. But I will also say that what I personally did with my Zoom um, all through this is I always have a killer pair of shoes under my desk. Um, usually I had pumps like these sparkly pumps um, especially when we were in complete shutdown, because you know what, you can kind of get into that rabbit hole. And I was like, okay, this will make me feel better. Um, so it's like, I think it becomes important in how you feel and it's, is what you'll project. So to Rebecca's point that when you dress in the right colors and the right style and you accessorize and you're put together with your makeup on, when you come to that meeting, you're coming fully engaged and prepared. There you go, there you go. What about you, Mary? Well, you know, I've worked with uh, many, many people recently over the past probably five, six months virtually creating these Zoom meeting environments and, you know, taking care of how we look. Our posture is so important. That angle, which I always like, that three quarters and then the shoulder front to the camera gives us a nice little S. And that always gives us our most. <laughs> we all just changed our posture a little bit. And this works for men and women. So that always going from this, which is not flattering, to this and turn, very flattering for all. That's very important. The other thing that I think about is not to overdo the makeup because we are still basically in a home environment and the screen reads what it does. So the makeup has to be everyday makeup. We're not on television. Uh, that's an important consideration. I think in the makeup realm, you know, uh, teeth are very important and the colors we wear really can impact how our teeth come across. I always say white and white and white, but we can only do so much. The, the color of lipstick that we wear can really lighten our teeth and make them appear whiter. Also, if your teeth aren't white, real white, then probably a bright white is not your best color. You need to move into your seasonal shade of beige. And then the other thing I can talk Love about, you know, once we do ourselves, right, and we're ready to rock and roll, you know, the other thing is, what are people looking at around us? It's really important to create a set that allows people to focus on you. And so many times there are sets that are just in our home that there's bookcases and there's you know, wires hanging and the lighting is terrible. And you know, this gives the impression that we are not organized, that maybe we're not very well. And the white noise around us, so distracting that people can't listen to the message that we are trying to convey and also listen to. So cleaning that background up, so important, and lighting. Lighting is essential. It can take away 10 years, ladies, or 15. It can also add it with the lighting. That's what I would say to add. I love that tip about the background. I know I was in another Zoom and someone mentioned that a lot of people like to do the bookcases in the background, but then everybody's trying to look and see what books you're reading the whole time and they're not paying attention to you. <laughs> so that was a really good point as well. Um, so Wendy, I'm really interested in what you do. I know that I have some glasses that I wear. I'm not wearing them right now, but um, I love that it's, you know, a very niche industry within the image consulting um, industry. And I would like to know, how do you manage to help others look spectacular all the time? <laughs> Well, I work, um, so I don't have a traditional brick and mortar store. I work by appointment only, just like an image consultant would. So when I'm going in to style someone with eyewear, I'm looking at their wardrobe, the colors, the necklines, their facial features, uh, and then most importantly, their personality. You know, what we were talking a little bit before about what is the style that you accessorize in? 
it might be a little bit different than the clothing style and the eyeglasses will fall into that. So someone might dress more conservatively, conservatively as a classic, but they might like to accessorize a little more like a dramatic. That might be their statement. So um, I always, and you know, we, we want to create balance and proportion, but I always say the personality really dictates the style of the eyewear because there's certain personalities that we will break facial balance rules in order to create a look. And it's important that we really zero in on what that personality is to get to the wow factor in their eyewear. Wow. Wow. So looking at your glasses, I love them on you. And I would go and buy something. And this is where our client make mistakes. They see things on others and they assume it's good for them. So if I try it, it's not going to reflect the same look as on your face or Rebecca's face or Mary's face or Amanda's face. Why is that? Well, and that's, that's the personality piece of it. So you do have dramatic in your personality for sure. Oh, yeah. you, know. <laughs> Hello. But, you know, mine are a little more of the artistic dramatic mm -hmm. where you're more of the elegant dramatic. So, Bingo. right. So it's more, you know, softer, softer curves on you. Um, still high contrast colors, but it wouldn't be in this geometric pattern that's all over the place. It might be, and for you, it would be symmetrical. Like if there was a placement of color, it would be evenly balanced or it would drive you crazy. Um, and actually I know, I do know this because I fit very well with glasses in the past at conferences. Um, and I do have, I didn't mention this, but for image consultants, I do have a program that teaches them how to style eyewear for their clients based on their facial features and balance proportion, but also really about personality and how do you balance the clothing styles. I look at the fabrics that you wear. So if you would just look at the fabrics you are wearing today, they're softer, they're lighter, there's intricate design details where I'm more um, structured, you know, definite blocking, color blocking. So a different dressing style. And that really helps to move somebody from just a basic frame to something that's really truly an accessory for them. It's incredible as image consultant what we do. We really read people before they say a word. Yes. That is spooky, really spooky. <laughs> But it's fun at the same time because when I see the transformation before and after, that is rewarding. That is what we strive for. That is satisfying. And as image consultant, I'm sure, ladies, you all experience that when we see the transformation in our client. And some, some of them even walk away from our studios in tears. And that is because they see the difference, they feel the difference, and they feel like, why did I waste all my life? That was the best investment ever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sarah, that's a great um, segue into something I wanted to talk to Mary about and then get everybody's feedback on. So Mary, I read your book, Undeniably You, and I, all of it was fabulous. Um, I recommend it to anybody. You can go to marygiuseppe.com to pre-order, right? Um, but one part kind of stood out to me and it was this part about how you had a client coming. We talked about this, I think yesterday, actually. You had a client coming to see you. I think maybe you were in New York and you knew that she was heavy. But when she got there, she, she was a lot heavier than you even thought she might be. And she was, you saw she was visibly embarrassed and worried and concerned about what you were going to think. And you looked at her and you said, listen, I'm not gonna make you look thin, but I'm gonna make you look fabulous. And instantly she felt relief and started crying. And, you know, you guys have a great relationship now. So I'd love, I think everybody's been in quarantine and, Maybe they did the quarant gained the quarantine 
quarantine and maybe they're not feeling great about themselves, but maybe we're all ready to get back. And I'd love you to talk a little bit about that and also how you dress for your body type now <laughs> and not what you hope. I mean, I guess you're the same body type, but you dress for your weight now and not what you hope it to be. Yes. Right? Yes. And I think, thank you for that. And, you know, that is one of my favorite stories. And I still think of her every day. And, you know, we were it, two hours later, she was, mm, she was about a size two X. And two hours later, we walked away with 23 complete outfits. Wow. And the tears were streaming down her face. And she said, I have never felt beautiful until this moment. Mm -hmm. You know, and then we did the hair and the makeup. And so the power, I always say, if someone wants to see transformation, step into the dressing room with us. That's where transformation happens. And, you know, now we've all been cocooned, you know, in this COVID situation and uh, literally cocooned. And part of the benefit of that is the refrigerator is just so darn close to us. And so I find myself going in there every hour myself. I mean, it is just an occupational hazard of being in your home. Mm -hmm. And what I have found through the years, so many clients that I work with that need a wardrobe, let's say for their careers, they need a wardrobe to get back into the game after this time of sort of a hiatus from that. And they've gained 10 pounds, they've gained 30 pounds, they've gained whatever amount of weight, and they are not going to purchase a garment until they lose the weight. Imagine the stress and the depression of the concept that you do not deserve an outfit. I'm not worthy of this. A punishment, so to speak, or maybe it's budgetary. And what I say is we can't afford not to dress for who we are now. Inside, when we buy one new outfit that's in our current size, couple things happen. We're able to breathe, literally, we're able to breathe. We are able to look at ourselves and not remember how that outfit might have looked. We can reframe who we are, even temporarily, and that empowers us to focus on our message and our interaction with our clients and our friends and our loved ones and not always have that back up. Oh my God, this is so tight. Oh, I look so fat. Oh, I can't. Oh, my. no, no, no. Once we put that beautiful new ensemble on, it really empowers us. And, you know, our body shape is our body shape. Whether we're a size zero or a size four X, our basic body shape is the same. And I still adhere to the old four, the A, the V, you know, the H and the eight. To me, that is an evergreen concept. And so no matter how our size goes up and down, our basic body shape remains the same. And what I always say, and what we've done as models, we learn to accentuate the best and hide the rest. Once you can embrace that these features, for instance, I'm an A, uh, a, a, a tiny one, but if we got down to it, that is what I would be. And so as an A, the smallest part of my body is here. So where I want to accentuate and bring a lot of attention and visibly, visually enlarge that to balance my hip is up here. My decollete, my shoulders, my accessories, a lot of color. This is where I want to enlarge the area so that I can balance that other area that is just slightly imbalanced for me. So once we know what features are the ones that we need to work on to create that perfect visual balance for the other, and we work with the optical illusion of lines and color blocking and monochromatic dressing, which is all the book, then you know what? No matter what your size is right now, you can find something that you can feel good about or a few pieces that you can buy reasonably and interchange to get you through that medium stage until you really feel like you're back in your body again. But don't punish yourself by not doing it because your image, the commercial you're bringing to the world is not going to be as good as it can be. Thank you, thank you, that was great. Um, Rebecca, did you have anything you wanted to add on to that? I do. Um, one, one of the things I would add to that, or one of the biggest points I find, is if you do have those clients that, or just as women, we know when we're unhappy with our bodies, if we are punishing ourselves by saying, I don't get a new outfit until I lose this weight, or I'm not going to call that image consultant until I 
get down to the size I want and I can work on my wardrobe, then it becomes this vicious cycle of low self-esteem and not thinking well of ourselves. And I think that we can tend to spiral and get worse. Whereas like Mary's saying, if you go, maybe you just go get one outfit that fits you well and it, it's your colors and it looks great on you, the psychological impact on that, the mood booster that that can give can actually then propel you forward to go ahead and lose that weight and get in shape and stop punishing yourself and stop beating yourself up because you at least have one outfit and you look in the mirror and you think, you know what? I do look good. Okay. I'm going to fix this. This is good. I can go ahead, but it, it kind of gets us out of that stuck spot where we're just beating ourselves up. So it's so important right now. I feel like a lot of people have been stuck in the house and just feeling bad about themselves sitting in their sweatpants. <laughs> so I think it's a, just a good conversation to have. And I really um, love that part of Mary, Mary's books. And Rebecca, I really love your feedback on that as well. Um, so Wendy, back to you. I'm sure that um, I'm curious because, you know, as someone who does have, I have, I think, one pair of glasses. So Sometimes I'm like, you know what? My glasses don't match with this outfit. So I'm just going to go blind today. Um, how, how many pairs should we have? Oh. Or should we just have like a neutral pair that matches? Every I'm just curious because I'm. Well, it's if we relate it, I, I always relate eyewear to shoes because, you know, if, you know, would we wear a pair of high heeled shoes when we're out for a walk in the woods? So our outfit dictates our shoes from functionality and fashion. And eyewear falls into that exact same category. So I think for years, people were like, well, I'll buy one pair every two years because my plan's gonna give me $100 or $200. And when you think about that, like our eyewear is fashion. It's more fashion now than it's ever been in my 30 years in the optical business. Um, it's front and center and we would never stop to to think about what a plan might give us if we needed a winter coat or we needed a new pair of shoes to work out at the gym. So I wear really is fashion. So and it's one of, I would say most of my clients will have three to four pairs and a pair of sunglasses. And budget might not allow everybody to do that in one sitting, but if we get the right glasses on that are really in your color palette, in the right style, you will wear them for years and years. So a lot of my clients will just keep adding to their wardrobe instead of um, you know, buying a humdrum pair that's just a pair of glasses, really just a pair of glasses and then wearing them to death for two years and then throwing them out. If you really, it's like wardrobe buying really good pieces. And when you get it right, you don't want to let those go. So you then you might start to add in a different color or a different style because we're never just one spec style, I call it. We're always two or three different styles. So you can start to change the look and change the color depending on what you're wearing, where you're going, who you're talking to. Um, like I have 40 pairs of glasses and there are days that I put an outfit on and I'm like, I don't have it right yet. That I don't 40 have pairs, you said 40? 40. <laughs> oh my God. And I still don't have the right pair sometimes when I'm going out and I put on an outfit and I'm like, you know what? Wendy, really you have more glasses then I have shoes <laughs> <laughs> but once once you get on to it it's like it's really hard to just have a pair that aren't exactly perfect with that outfit so um and you know I think during during the shutdown I was doing zoom styling and people were buying five and six pairs of glasses because they I think the rush to Zoom meetings and the rush to our virtual world made people realize that wearing their, you know, little cheapy shopper drug mart, you know, reading glasses down here on Zoom were a little distracting. 
you know, they weren't functional, they weren't fashionable, you know, just this, just this alone makes, makes us look 10 years older. You know, if the lighting's bad and your glasses are at the end of your nose, you're going to add 20 years, uh, right, Mary? <laughs> Not just 10. But so I think it became, a lot of these things became even more prevalent, more in your face, so, so to speak. So yes. I guess the short answer to that is I would, I would recommend at least three pairs to cater to your different looks. Oh, I can see owning three pairs, but not 40. <laughs> <laughs> well, remember, are we talking about brand? I'm on brand. <laughs> yes, 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 definitely. Can I add on something here for um, our followers and for you ladies? I mean, as a trainer myself, as an image consultant, I always tell them about how to put yourself together. But now more than ever before, because of the pandemic and the Zoom meeting, your focal point would be around your face. So actually your eyewear is now a key element to looking good and looking younger and healthier, obviously. So um, in saying that, I would love to hear your point. This is not one of the one I bought from you, but what are your thoughts about my glasses today? <laughs> Come on, be honest. <laughs> You're on the hot seat, Wendy. <laughs> well, we need to learn, and this is how we learn. Right. So um, when I look at your glasses, the style that I see is very, what I call subtle, sophisticated, and natural. What I see is your style is dramatic and elegant. So the glasses, I this pair of glasses, I don't feel are in sync with the rest of your look. Um, unless you didn't want your glasses to be there. there sometimes there's a, a reason right, of why people do what they do. Like, for example, you know, um, this could be distracting if I was on a two hour training, but because I'm on a branding session, the fact that my glasses are the focal point makes sense. So sometimes the glasses being understated, very classic um, shapes sometimes are done on purpose. Mm -hmm. But if I was styling you, I would move you out of this into something that was um, had more more design details that really showed your elegance and um, maybe a, two colors that showed some high contrast to play to your daring dramatic personality. Yeah. Isn't it funny because I do own actually about four glasses and I tend to go back to this particular one and I bought two of the same one, believe it or not. So I guess then I would ask, why are you going there? Is it, hmm. is it just that that's what you got comfortable with? Or is it that you didn't give it any thought? Or like, what, what is the reason? Because we always do things for a reason, whether it's conscious or not conscious. <laughs> I think because I feel comfortable, first of all. Second of all, it goes with all my wardrobe. Mm -hmm. the, the other one, one of them is two-toned, you're restricted. And the third one is silver with diamond is. So I'm restricted, like for, for example, today I'm wearing yellow or gold to match my yellow. So I've felt, oh no, I can't wear that. I can't wear that. This is the safest one to match my hair and so on. Yeah, so see that's where you've consciously given it some thought because Rebecca and I were talking before we went live that when you have a dramatic personality, if you do too much drama, it's overkill and people don't know where to look. There you go. Right? So now we know why you did that. So um, it's, so it, you know, it's not fair for me to say they don't work, but I think as image consultants, what I just showed is there's a way to communicate um, with our clients to try to understand why they're doing what they're doing um, instead of just blurting out, no, that looks awful or no, that looks good because you can do that in, any retail shop, that's what the salespeople are gonna do. Yeah, oh, that looks good, oh, that doesn't look good. We yeah. wanna give um, we want to give background into why it's good or why there might be a better choice. And I think that's what working with a professional gives you is that perspective. I know, I know. You know what, it's funny you said that because we all know as image consultants, including Mary and Rebecca, that we stop and think about 
the message we want to send. And many people, this is where they fall short. And this is the biggest mistake that they get up in the morning and they decide, oh, I just want to wear whatever you know, something comfortable. But like Rebecca earlier said, you need to think about the top, which is TOP. And even now in this pandemic, top, you, you're showing your top part. Mm -hmm. So it, it blends in. You need to, to think about your, the T for the time of the day you're wearing them, regardless if they it's makeup, glassware, glassware, eyewear or, or, you know, fashion or whatever. And then the O is for the occasion, mm -hmm. okay? So that is something that people need to consider. And the P is for the people around you, the people you trying to impress. Or on Zoom, the people are following you. You know who's gonna be on Zoom. So you need to dress for them. And also um, think about those three bullet points and you will not get it wrong. But again, I cannot stress enough about thinking about your personality and, and bringing yourself to be like, normally I don't wear, wear light lipstick, but because I'm not 100% um, out there because I've been sick, it's like I wanted to settle it and, and I love this top and I wanted the focal point to be on my neckline. Mm -hmm. so therefore, this is what we do as image consultant. And this is what really, it, it, it's, it's amazing what we do. It's, it's the power of image consulting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is I will change my glasses depending on the person I'm going to see. So being very artsy and creative when I'm going to see that classic, you know, sophisticated personality for the very first time, I will scale it back. Ah, here you go. You know, so I might go a little funkier in my dress and a little more understated. Not that I ever go very understated, but a little bit, yeah. just so that I don't, I don't intimidate them. I don't scare them on the first thought because a subtle sophisticate meets a creative and goes, whoa. Uh, just so you know, I'm never going to wear that. Yeah. And so I scale it back. Then once I've developed a relationship and I get to know them, then I, I go the gamut because I think we still have to be authentic and true to who we are yes. so that we can forget about us and really concentrate on our clients. So true. And another tip also, color. Color is very important because color is the first thing people will notice about you. Mm -hmm. They're going to forget your name. They're going to forget what style you were wearing, but they will never forget, oh, that blue eyed lady or that brunette or that blonde, or, you know, she was wearing pink, that hot pink lipstick. So when it comes to fashion and eyewear, this is the key element before the style. Mm -hmm. I, I shouldn't dismiss before the style. I, I shouldn't say that. I, I actually, they go hand in hand. Yeah. You cannot have a good style with that a good color and you cannot have a good color with the wrong style. Exactly. Yeah, I 100% agree because, you know, a lot of people when we talk about, you know, having one pair of glasses that, you know, Amanda asked, you know, a lot of people because they only have one pair think I need to go black or I need to go tortoiseshell and then I don't have to think about it. But we know that our clients and, and women know that they dress within a certain range of colors. And once you know those colors, you can choose eyewear that harmonizes with all of those colors that is beautiful on your complexion, that really enhances your eye color and is a nice accessory with your wardrobe too. So yeah, color is key. And I think the big thing that I do is move people out of the safety net of black and tortoiseshell when I can. <laughs> And in saying that, black's one of the big hot colors in I wear this. Black and pink are the big the biggies for the fall that we're seeing a lot of new styles, but with a lot of design detail too. Here you go. Here you go. Yeah, thank you. I think it's really important that people learn about eyewear because it's not necessarily something you think of, but it's actually really important. It's something people wear every day if you wear glasses, and it's 
something we especially need to think about now that we're on Zoom and everyone's focusing on our <laughs> face and our head. Um, I kind of wanted to pivot for a minute. Um, I don't really know your background, Wendy, but I know Rebecca's and Fairy Tales and Mary's a little bit, and they all have something in common I found, and it's that you're all mothers, and at some point in your life, you chose to focus on your kids and then get back into your business. And in, in this case, it's image consulting in the fashion industry. So I'll, I guess I wanted to start with you, Rebecca. You had such a big resume. You know, you worked for all these big retailers and fashion designers, and then you took some time to be with your kids. And I think a lot of people that are involved with Women Roar have their own businesses. So I'd love to hear about how you did it, what were your fears, how you overcame them, and you know, talk a little bit about that. And then I'd love to hear Fariel and of course Mary's feedback on that. Okay, um, I I grew up pretty much knew, knowing what I wanted to do. I wanted to be in the fashion industry. I was very determined. I was very focused, and got through college and out into uh, did an internship with Neiman Marcus, and where I came in contact with Donna Karen and did some work with her, and then worked with the Gap during their their big decade in the 90s and kind of climbed that ladder and I loved it. I loved being in the fashion industry. I loved dressing people. I loved clothing. I loved the conversations. I loved all of it. But when I got married and my husband and I decided that we were going to have kids, we did make the conscious decision that we would raise them. We would not, I would not stay in the corporate world. We would not have a nanny. We would not go that route, but I would step out and actually raise my own children. It is a decision that I I'm so thankful that I made. I don't regret any of it. I love being a mother. But when we made that decision, I remember my last day at work and my husband took me out for a picnic dinner and we were just talking about it. And, and he said, you're being so quiet and I'm never quiet. And I said, it's just weird. And I don't know. It was very scary not knowing what life was going to be like. I'm very much a people person. I'm very outgoing and thinking about the loneliness and what that would be like, but it turned out to be the biggest dream. I have two beautiful children, a daughter who's now 19, a son who is 15. And my days of mothering have actually not stopped. We chose to homeschool our son. He's in 10th grade now. We chose to homeschool him at the beginning of ninth grade because he actually struggles with three learning disabilities and traditional school was just got to the point where it wasn't productive. So I homeschool him as well as owning my business and getting my business off the ground, but still it's a great, um, it is a great blessing. We have a fantastic relationship. I don't know many mothers of 15 year old boys whose son is as sweet or will come and say, mom, I love you. Mm -hmm. And even in front of people, like he's great. He, he is a sweetheart and he appreciates the help. And I love being able to be there and help him. But then thinking about the fact that he's going to graduate and he's going to move on and I need to do something um, because I am not the kind of person who just sits and does nothing, I decided I would go back to the fashion industry on my terms. And that is where I came back to image consulting because it's everything I love about the fashion industry. I get to pick and choose of all the jobs, which one I want. And that is dressing people and that light bulb moment when you help them find themselves and find the look and they see themselves for the first time as great. Like I, I'm looking in the mirror and I see something that I like for the first time that, that, and going through that whole process with people I've always loved. So going back to image or going to image consulting was a natural transition for me. It is something I look forward to building. Like um, we talked about in the beginning, I am new to this um, or to this career, this aspect of the fashion industry and the image industry, but it is something that I am so passionate about and see so much worth and so much value in, and we bring, we bring so much joy to people and we just help them into, um, I think, step out into the, their best selves and kind of shrug off some of that, that baggage that a lot of people tend to carry. So it's just really, it, it fits our lifestyle perfectly. Thank you so much. Um, I'd love to get to Mary as well. I know that you have two kids as well and grandkids. And I know your daughter, Gina, and she is just amazing and wonderful and full of confidence. So I'd love to hear a little bit about how you balance that and how you, you know, 
got back into your business and your career? Thank you. And thank you. Yes, Gina is something. She is just um, uh, both of my kids. And, you know, and now I have five grandchildren. And I think that uh, as I was listening and uh, to Rebecca, and I think the thing that I can say is this, that it's really important to decide to choose to be present in whatever facet of life we are in at the moment. So many women uh, struggle with uh, kind of a guilt over what they're not doing, that they don't really experience mm -hmm. fully what they are doing, what they choose to do. And I think having that conversation with ourselves in different points of our lives to really address what is my priority at this point in my life and what is negotiable and what is not negotiable. So when I went back to modeling in New York, you know, I had made up my mind that I was doing this and I was a little bit old at the time to step back in at that, it's funny to say now, but at that time I was, and I was also finding myself shorter than the younger girls who were taller than what I was when I was uh, with Ford. And this is what happened. I made up my mind I was going to do it. So it's a business. And that's the thing about a profession. It's a business. Choose to act in your business as a business, not as some emotional fulfillment, because that's not good. That's not where it works. I mean, we do get fulfilled emotionally, but the focus has to be on the business. And I remember when I got my first, well, my first huge, all billboards everywhere, all over the world, clock faces and all this stuff. And, you know, the gal that I worked with when I was 11 years old at Ford, so, you know, now I was older than that. And I walked into her office and I said, I quit. She said, what? Now you're quitting? Now you have your first international billboard? I said, yeah, I'm quitting. I did it. I, I've done it. I proved that I can do it. And I really want to have children. So bye. And I walked away. And, you know, then I began the chapter of moving into that mom and wife role, which I love very much, but guess what happened? Pretty soon I was doing charity work and I was looking at these fashion shows and I was looking at it. They were not doing what they needed to do and they didn't know how to fundraise. And I, I stepped back in, in a different role. And throughout my life, that's what I've done. You know, I've taken time out and then I've stepped back in. And for me, that's what the balance is. But just even today, I had clients on Zoom. My Ariel was with me today, Gina's daughter, my nine-year-old granddaughter. And she is a fixture with my clients. They know her. And so I think that it's important to be where you are the, in the hours or the years that you're there and to understand that this is not forever. You know, And there's so much road ahead. And what you love, you will always love. And if you can't come back to it in one fashion, there's other fashions that you can come back and still really live your passion with, with more wisdom and understanding. So I would say, you know, patience, being present, being realistic about what you really want when you want it, and then treating that with all the respect it deserves. Thank you so much. Um, we actually have a question for, for everybody. Um, Noreen is asking, she said, Assuming all the panelists are able to offer their consulting services virtually, um, what does that entail for each? So why don't we each just give a short answer? Mary, if you wanna go first. Are you offering those services? And if so, what does that look like? Yes, I am offering services. Usually people fly either to New York or Florida or California to work with me. Those are the three central locations that I fly between. Now that's not happening. So what I have found is that I have great resources that I can rely upon that are trustworthy and dependable in each one of those locations. So I work on Zoom. I go through whatever the goals are of my client and what their wardrobe goals are. Then like I did just this past week, I actually went into a store. I pulled garments. We did a FaceTime session. I had a model there that was similar to her body type. We did a virtual try on and this client happened to be in Canada. So we packed them all up and I shipped them out. And now we're going to do a try on session. You know, in other words, so you can fluently and fluidly still provide the same great service, the same insights and the same care. I think it takes a little bit more prep, but I love it. I do Zoom, you know, almost six months, seven months now exclusively. And it works wonderfully 
wonderfully well. Great. Um, Rebecca, do you offer those services? I am just starting to offer those services. And again, just like Mary, Zoom is key to those services and emailing. I have sets of paperwork with questionnaires and things that the client can write out or type out and send back to me in terms of their goals and what they're hoping to accomplish their budget, that kind of thing. I also, um, I have completed Ferial's 4x4 color training course, and I'm a certified 4x4 co color analysis. And so through that, there are virtual drapes that I can use to do online virtual color analysis. And there's a set of instructions I have that I can email to clients to give them specific instructions on how to take those pictures so that I can get an accurate enough um, view of their skin tones and whatever so that they can get a good color analysis. And then I'm also just starting to play around with a couple of different, uh, I was approached by a couple of different companies about virtual styling and online shopping uh, it's a platform where you can actually create a personalized shopping video so if your client is looking for something they don't want to go to stores so they're looking for a great blazer you it is a platform where you can go to different websites and choose the blazers check the measurements that kind of th thing make a personalized shopping video that they can actually click on within the video and shop the items you choose for them and so then that helps um, streamline the online shopping service for clients, but then using Zoom to do the closet edits and try things on and body analysis and things like that. I have a dog barking, so Ferriel, if you'd like to take over <laughs> a sec. Okay, it's my turn again. Well, um, what I specialize in and what I offer to both client or for anyone who wants to start their own business, I specialize in training. And for clients, I specialize in makeovers. So we start from head to toe. We look at your hair, we create a new look for you. I accompany you to your favorite hairdresser or a hairdresser that I work with. We do your makeup application. We teach you how to apply your own makeup for a day and evening um, makeup. Then we do go shopping, the favorite part of everybody, to select a, a new wardrobe or just few pieces that you can mix and match in your wardrobe. And at the end, we can take pictures and have fun before and after to see how powerful image consulting business is. And to remind you also that you don't need a million dollar to look like one. So therefore, it's very important to know and to work with an image consultant that can stay within your needs and cater to your needs and budget. Great. Um, I'll let Wendy answer the question and then um, I have one more for everybody. I, uh, I started offering the virtual eyewear styling in April uh, successfully and, and globally, which was, which was a surprise to me too. Uh, what I do the same thing, I do an eyewear consultation on Zoom. Um, I have my complete inventory with me, so I'm actually making specific recommendations for them, a follow-up with images, or I, um, what a lot of people, I've actually shipped them a collection of eyewear to try on. So that goes to their home. Then they get back on Zoom with me. We look at style, we look at fit, we look at color. And I, what was so surprising to me were women who, um, one didn't even know what Zoom was or how to get on it. And at the end, she was, she's like, this has been so much fun because having the eyewear in hand in her home for two or three days, she was doing fashion shows with all of her outfits with her husband and her sister. And she's like, okay, I can't send them back to you yet. I need to show one more person. And so um, women were having a lot of fun with the process. And so I was, my soul was being fed with the enthusiasm as well. So I, uh, I do offer the eyewear styling as well by, by Zoom. And it's funny because Mary just said she had her client up in Canada. So I was just thinking you must get some business from other image consultants. Yes. Yeah. You know, it's, it's building those strategic alliances is a great business move because when they, they come to you for eyewear, but then they see that I'm an image consultant. So of course, then they want me to 
style them in wardrobe and I don't do that anymore. I only do eyewear. So it's great to have resources and alliances to refer to that, that you know and trust that are gonna that work, work well um, and that will work well or maybe be a good fit with your client too. Yes, I think just like connecting, even if people are in the same industry is so important because you never know where it will go. Mm -hmm. um, but just to finish up today, I'd love each of you just to quickly just give an overview about what's ha currently happening in your business, how people can get in touch with you. If you have a new book out, how they can pre-order it or, you know, come to your virtual party or if you have classes or Zoom meetings or anything, just go ahead and tell everybody watching today um, about you and how they can connect with you. So let's go in that same order. Mary, why don't you go ahead and go first? I'm honored and thank you all very much for including me in today. What an extraordinarily beautiful group of women with such great messages and passion. And I, you know, I am very excited about my book, my baby. And this is actually styling all, you know, all the life's work styling in a book that you can take. The ebook is available in pre-order. I love it because you can put it on your phone. And when you go into a store, all of the information is right there for you to pull up and look at. So, and then I have the hardcover. It's available on Amazon either way. It's available on barnesandnoble.com and it's available through the website. That's probably marygiuseppe.com is the easiest way to get in touch with me. I'm happy to speak for your group, have a color consultation or a style consultation, uh, come to a party. And yes, our launch is November 13th and 14th in California. And thanks to Amanda, we'll be streaming live. And I look forward to working with you and uh, hearing what you think about the book and mostly celebrating you just feeling and looking your best. So thank you. So exciting, Mary. I'm so excited for you. And I actually read the book and it is amazing. I learned a lot from it. Um, so next, Rebecca. Um, Rebecca has a, an amazing resume as well. So Rebecca, why don't you just tell them a little bit about what you're doing now and how they can get in touch with you. Okay, thank you. And I too have enjoyed being here. Thank you for inviting me. This has been so much fun. My business is Refined Image Consulting, and you can find me on Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram under Refined Image Consulting. That is one way clients can connect with me, and I offer little tips on style, how to have great style, things to think about, motivation, that kind of thing. I'm also working virtually, like I said, but mostly I am seeing clients in person. I am doing a lot of color analysis right now. I think maybe it's being on Zoom calls, maybe it's just being in the pandemic, but I, I have a lot of women who are realizing that they need to know what colors to wear. And so that's been a lot of my business. I am doing closet edits and styling as well. And just having a lot of fun in person. I've been, I've been really blessed that in my area, people are willing to come out and um, not only meet with me as clients, but I've also had some speaking engagements where I've talked to some groups of women about personal style and the importance of personal branding. So it's a very exciting time in my business. My business is growing and taking off despite the pandemic. And I look forward to connecting with everyone on social media. Thank you, Rebecca. I'm actually going to go over to Wendy and I'll finish up with Fariel. Um, so Wendy, tell us what you're up to, how people can get in touch with you and what services you're offering. So I am meeting clients personally um, in the greater Toronto area um, and virtually for the rest of the world. Um, you can find me on Instagram. I wear underscore expert. And I also have a training program for image consultants, which is um, all the details of my process, which is at bespectacular.com. Thank you, Wendy. And Fariel, Fariel um, is the president of AICI, has a lot of connections in the image consultant industry. She's probably 
the person you want to get in touch with if you're interested in learning more about the industry, um, connecting with other image consultants, or maybe even getting certified. Um, also, she's my partner in Women Roar, which is a project that we've taken on to empower women in all industries, including image consultants. And I'd love you, Farrell, if you could tell them a little bit about your own business and um, Women Roar as well. Excellent. Thank you, Amanda. And it has been a pleasure having all of you here. And it's so nice to interact with like-minded people. It's so powerful. So what I do really is connect with other people as well. I feel with them. I, I, I walk their road and um, I help them to look good and when you look good you feel great and this is my message in life because the truth is I struggled in believing in myself and I feel with this woman because I'm a mother of three as well and my body you know um, went like a yo-yo but I do specialize also in training and that was not my forte or my mission in life but Many people, when I worked with them and did their makeover, Amanda, they kept on telling me like, oh my God, how did you explain it? Can you explain it again? I love the way you explain things. I love the way you teach. I love the way. So they sort of pushed me into the training industry. And if anyone out there who is a stylist, a makeup artist, a hairdresser, a designer, my company helped them reading people and delivering what people's need. And my business led me to Amanda and Amanda is my partner in crime. And yes, inspiring and empowering people is our first priority uh, into, you know, helping people. And being an, a, a person, a, a mother, and Amanda is a, a new mother, by the way, um, it inspires us to keep going. And this is why we decided to come up with this idea to do um, uh, our conference. And it's going to be end of next year. So hopefully you can see what it's all about. We need all your energy ladies to join us. And, and it's not only for image consultant, it's for women in general, um, people in their home, or excuse my, my, going, my message is going crazy. My computer just woke up. Um, anyway, it, it's in, incredible. Women's Raw Conference, you do not want to miss that because we're going to have amazing trainers to teach you for your personal growth and your business growth. Great. Thank you, Fariel. I'd just like to add on to that. Um, anybody who registered for today's uh, webinar. Um, we will be sending you an email with all of the information for all of our panelists today and anything that we talked about so you can have all that information. We'll also um, be, be in touch um, probably in the next few days or next week about our next session, um, which is actually going to be a nutritionist and a fitness trainer um, to teach us how to be healthy on the inside and outside. Um, so that will be our next session in November. So we're excited to tell you about that coming up. And of course, if you have any questions at all, or if you want to get in touch with anybody, I can connect to you. It's amanda at macmandamedia.com. Um, I'll put that in the chat box for everybody. And we really appreciate everyone joining us. And I wanted to thank all of our panelists today. And um, that's it. Thank you, ladies. Thanks, Amanda. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you. And that is it for today. So can we take a, a screenshot, a picture? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> OK, everybody smile. Yeah. One, two, three. Hold on. I have to make it big. I'll, I'll say one, two, three again. Sorry. Okay, one, two, three. Excellent. Okay. <laughs> um, oh, I think oh, so everyone in the chat is saying thank you. I did want to mention they said they really enjoyed it and thought you all knew what you were talking about and they just loved the session. So thank you again. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye.